Hello friends, in this problem uh, we will see uh, a problem called red and green balls and uh, it's a problem it was requested by one of the subscribers and uh, it's not there on lead code or any other platform so I may not be able to test the correctness of my approach so it's just like a uh, interview kind of scenario where I will be uh, discussing my approach how I think uh, it can be solved it may not be correct and you may find some fault in it so feel free to uh, put your comments in the comment section what you feel and uh, if what is the mistake and what how it can be improved so let's begin first read the question we are given a square n cross n grid and its position is starting from here top to bottom so this is n cross nth position this is 1 cross 1th position and we will have this as the diagonal since this is a square the first cell in the diagonal will be this next will be this and so on this will perfectly lie on the diagonal if it's a square n cross n so this is kind of grid we are given and in this grid every grid is either a red grid red ball is placed in the grid or at some places green balls are placed anywhere in the grid so only two colors are there you can also think of it as a, a binary grid with 0 and 1 but this red and green makes it more interesting so we have a grid like that and what we have to do uh, we have to make all the red balls either on the diagonal or below it so there should be no red ball in this region these diagonal cells are allowed you can put the red balls there or below it like this but there should not be any red ball here here there should be only green balls and uh, it may not be even possible to make such arrangement so in that case we will return minus one otherwise we have to return how many row swaps are required so there is only one operation you can do and that's why i have highlighted it in bold which is to swap to adjacent rows not just any two rows you cannot pick this row and this row and swap this no you have to pick two adjacent rows and swap them that is the only operation so you have to return the minimum number of swaps required so that this condition is satisfied that is all red balls come below it and uh, if you cannot find a solution then you will return minus one for example uh, let's say we have a red ball here in the last cell and again we have a red ball both are above the diagonal so there is no way you can achieve a solution so somehow you swap this keep swapping down and move it here so this red will be here now when you swap this entire row is swapped within that row everything remains constant this row will be completely pushed down or up so the uh, if you put this r here then this will go up so you cannot put two r's at the same place two rows in the same row so here we will not have a solution so uh, the user has also given two examples although these are very small examples and it may not be uh, good enough to deduce any algorithm out of this how to approach it so let's just run through it so here we have r g r r so already all the r's are either on the diagonal or below it so no, no swap is required so the output is zero and this first line denotes how many rows are there so here again uh, first line is the number of rows in the grid so number of rows will be same as number of columns since it's a square grid here it's g r r g so this red is above the diagonal g g and r r so this one is above so we will swap this with this so what will happen this r g will go here so this now satisfied since this is the diagonal so we are allowed to keep red on the diagonal so one swap is required so the output is one so let's take a bigger example so we can make some uh, solution out of that so let's say we have let's take a 5 cross 5 so we have g g r r g and i should have written in red So let's say this is our example and here we have a 5 cross 5 grid. So what uh, idea we will derive is that let's say we have a generic uh, 
square and this is the diagonal so if there is some red above it in the same row we can have multiple reds and when we swap a row we swap this entire row so if we will move it down our aim is to move it down so that these either come to the diagonal here or below it so we will see distance of these red from the diagonal so on diagonal what will be these indices these are rows and these are columns so both row and column are same you can see this is 0 0 this is 1 1 2 2 and so on so if you see this distance you subtract what is the row number this may be probably 1 and column may be 5 so uh, what is the distance here 1 to 5 there, there is a distance of 5 4 so this value will be 5 5 on the diagonal but it's 1 5 so we need to move it by 4 in order to reach here so its distance will be 4 similarly if it's immediately to the left of it that is in fourth column then its distance will be 3 so we will ignore these smaller values since uh, if this uh, red comes to the diagonal or below it by swapping it four times if we swap it four times with the row below it it will exactly lie on the diagonal so if this one lies on the diagonal this will lie here left to it so that is in the safe zone so we are only concerned about this farthest point from this or diagonal similarly there should be some surplus if there is some deficiency we will call it deficiency or negative 4 then there should be some surplus below it since uh, if there are two rows we swap them so this comes below this goes up so whatever is the red here it had some surplus that is it can accommodate that many swaps before it goes above the diagonal so we will call that surplus or positive distance so uh, this its uh, surplus will decrease by one since it has went up by one this row is has moved up by one and for this row the deficiency will decrease by one so here it needed four swaps if we move it down every value is down by one now its distance remains three so its deficiency is three so how are we calculating it so in a given row we just keep track of the maximum value so just ignore this so this value is minus three so we do row minus column index do r minus c so here it will be negative because at this diagonal row and column are equal below it row is more than column above it row is less than column so this will be negative so if we pick the most negative in this we will get this maximum distance so pick the min min of r minus c for all the values in a given row and that min will be representative of that row we will call that row deficiency similarly here row is more than column so let's say we have a red at uh, fifth row and first column then here it's a surplus of four but we will pick the smallest one since this is at a four distance of from diagonal that means even if we swap it four times move it up by four times still it will be safe but there may be some other red here which is very close to the diagonal just one unit from it so if we swap this row one times it will exactly be on the diagonal if we swap it two times then it will go above the diagonal and that will be invalid state so here again we keep the minimum value so here the value is 4 the distance plus 4 here it was negative and this is plus 1 so we keep the minimum so in all cases we are keeping min of r minus c only is that above the diagonal for red values it will be negative here it will be positive so if uh, we saw that whenever we swap the surplus decreases and uh, deficiency increases so if it's minus 4 it will become minus 3 and similarly for some value below it uh, it was plus 2 then it will become plus 1 so let's run through this example then it will be clear so for this row uh, this value is uh, 0 minus 2 that is minus 2 and it's 0 minus 3 that is minus 3 so minimum is minus 3 that is this red so here we put minus 3 here the minimum is this one 1 minus 3 is minus 2 here it's uh, 2 minus 0 that is 2 and there is nothing else so it's plus 2 here it's plus 3 and here it's 
uh, the closest to the diagonal will be this is the diagonal this one so the minimum r minus c is 4 r minus c is 3 r minus c is 2 so we pick always the minimum so it will be plus 2 so this is the pre-processing that you need to do and you will store this in a row in, in a vector or an array which whose length will be n so that will correspond to one value will correspond to one row so now after you have calculated this vector surplus or deficiency vector whatever you want to call it you do a dry run here you see that what is the sum here it should be more than 0 so here it's minus 5 then plus 5 this makes 0 then we have plus 2 so its sum is 2 so there will be a solution if the sum is less than 0 that means deficiency is more so when we here we saw that if we swap two rows the deficiency increases by one that is minus k becomes minus k plus one and below it there is a plus q then it will become q minus one so if their earlier sum was q minus k if you add this value this minus 1 plus 1 cancels it will still be q minus k so this sum will remain same so when we swap two rows this sum will remain same so if it's negative in the beginning even after no matter how many times we swap it will remain negative that is there will be some deficiency so in that case solution will not exist so after you calculate this vector you do a dry run what is the sum of this vector it should be positive or zero then only solution exists otherwise straight away return minus one now what we need to do the bottom one bottom row cannot be negative if it's negative then there is no solution because the row which goes up deficiency increases so if it's already negative then uh, there is no way to make it positive on on the side note it cannot be negative because uh, if r all are r then it will be zero it will be exactly on the diagonal so anyway it cannot be negative so uh, so you will start from bottom and pick the find the first negative so this is positive 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 there would be a few positives below otherwise you cannot swap it because these bottom one will go up top one will come down so negatives will come down to make them positive so here we see that at least three swaps are required to make this row zero or positive so iterate from the bottom find the first negative so this is the first negative immediately below it you look whether we have a zero or a positive so if it's a zero we will not swap with that otherwise this zero will become negative so if it's a zero uh, push that zero down so in this case we have a positive followed by negative so swap these two so let me draw it here so we swap these two so this is our first swap so what will be the result after this this will remain same this will remain same these rows are unchanged this goes up so this red comes here now its surplus just remains one it's one unit from the diagonal you can simply add subtract one from this so it, this will become plus one and this uh, row has come down so its deficiency is now just one so it's minus one you can straight away add a value here and subtract a value from this so this is the updated vector whatever is this vector let's call it v so this after one swap this is the state still some negatives are there if you add the value you will see that still it remains same so here it was plus two so this minus five plus five then plus two here also it will be same this is zero then minus three plus three zero then plus two and we know the reason why if we have two rows like this minus k plus q after swapping it will remain same q minus k so now this is the new state after one swap now again we start from bottom you can do optimization here so that you don't need to start from bottom but for simplicity let's say we always start from bottom given a vector so find the first negative we come here this is the first negative so we see below it whether it's zero or positive it's positive so we can swap these two so we swap these two so what is the state now uh, this remains as it is this comes down so it becomes 
so I had made a mistake here so this negative row came here so it will be minus 1 here and plus 1 this one so this was plus 1 this was minus 1 so this is the state now again we find the first negative this one so we swap these two so what will be the state minus 3 plus 1 and uh, this 3 comes here so its value will decrease by 1 plus 2 and this one comes here so it will increase by 1 so it becomes 0 and then 2 now again we have a negative value so we start from bottom we reach here we find the first negative we swap it with below it now it becomes a uh, plus 1 goes here so it becomes 0 this comes here so it becomes minus 2 then plus 2 0 2 now this is the first negative below it which is, is a positive number so we swap these two and now it becomes 0 this goes here so plus 1 this comes down so minus 1 then 0 2 still we have a negative we should not have any negative so we start from bottom we find this is the first negative but below it we have a 0 so if we swap it this 0 will become minus 1 this will become 0 so we will not gain anything this state will remain same this goes up becomes minus 1 this comes down becomes 0 so we will this state will remain exactly same so that's why when we find a 0 we will uh, try to swap it with below so we will swap these two and it will be 0 plus 1 minus 1 this goes here so plus 1 this comes down so plus 1 again if you sum it up it will be 2 always in all these vectors it will be always 2 plus 1 minus 1 0 plus 1 plus 1 2 now this is the first negative starting from bottom so swap these two and now we will have 0 plus 1 this goes here so it becomes 0 this comes down so it becomes 0 and this remains plus 1 still it's plus 2 now there is no more negative so we are done so how many swaps we needed 1 2 3 4 5 6 so we needed 6 swaps to make it valid and if you want to know what is the state of this so whenever we swap you can keep a solution matrix of same size and whenever we swap these two rows row second and third you swap the values there so in that way you will get the solution matrix also so, so this is how we will solve it so feel free to comment below uh, uh, how you can improve it further is it a valid solution or a an invalid solution and uh, the time complexity would be that here we have n cross n cell and to calculate this vector we took n square time in the beginning then we are doing uh, one swap in each of these so I am always starting from bottom so that takes another n square times in the worst case but you can optimize it it will take less than n square but still adding some smaller quantity to n square it will be n square only so the time complexity is n square here and the space we are using this extra uh, vector this space will not be counted since this is the input given to you so space is o of n time is of o of n square so write the codes here with us we can discuss more on this thanks for watching